Hey, it's all with another video, and today we're going to talk transmog farming in the near future and what you can do now to prepare. Hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe for more WoW coverage. So that means all of you who have probably had to run four characters through all of those legacy instances just to make sure you're collecting all the appearances, uh, that won't be the case anymore in War Within. You'll just be able to run it with one character. In the upcoming War Within expansion, we'll be able to unlock transmog appearances even if the character collecting that gear cannot use it. So soon I'll be able to go into a raid like Battle of the Tsar lore, and when I loot bosses, I'll be able to unlock wand appearances as a warrior or cloth gear as a hunter and so on and so forth. But does that mean your current transmog farms right now are less efficient? Shouldn't we hold off on transmog stuff until the feature becomes available? Kind of, sort of, yeah, but I do have some advice on what you can start working on today so your industrial level transmog farms will be even better. First, you want to start considering one or more characters to conduct this farming. The reason why one character might not be ideal for you depends on your lineup, so take a look at your character sheet. Make the following considerations. Is there a character who is faster than others? Is one character better for farming of old currencies, notably Shadowlands content that requires a lot of unlocks? Your main character might have all that old content unlocked, but doesn't have the inventory space to also pick up hundreds of unique items plowing through old raids and dungeons. And for your own reasons, you don't want to clear out that character's bags. So there's no right or wrong strategy there, just go with your preferences and run with it. If you're going to have a character dedicated almost solely for running old content, they just need basic gear, unless you're going for more recent content like Shadowlands or soon Dragonflight raids where you'll need a good bit of muscle. In fact, for this level of fast collections, I'd recommend tweaking your character to just run as fast as possible. Earlier, I put out a basic speed guide that I'll link in the description, but basically while you can use like whatever character and class that you want, druids are very easy and inexpensive to prep a speed set for. One other important tip, when these transmog unlock features goes live, it's going to be the end of Dragonflight, and we're going to have new levels and new gear to obtain. I don't suggest investing too much gold into a top-end speed set unless you plan on locking this character's level, so just keep all that into consideration. This kind of goes without saying, but you want to have the biggest bags that you can afford and make sure that your inventory is pretty much empty outside of maybe buffs or items to help you get around faster. For example, a Flight Master's Whistle or a Jeeves. From here, you want to ask yourself, what sort of legacy farmer do you want to be? Do you want to loot every corpse in order to maximize your gold gains? Or are you going to skip out on looting bosses and just let it all get thrown into the mailbox later? Looting everything means overall your mog runs are going to be slower. You're grabbing everything, occasionally unloading your bags or posting auctions. But you are getting everything. Blasting through without looting bosses means that you're skipping out on buying on equip gear that may drop from trash mobs, as well as other old junk to vendor. Regardless of your method, there are two add-ons I suggest for managing your inventory as it fills up. The first is called Aardvark. It's a very powerful add-on that auto-vendors items that you add to its list. The really cool thing about Aardvark is that you can add entire dungeon and raid loot tables to lists with just the push of a button. With the add-on installed, go over to your dungeon journal, set the filter to whatever it is that you want to see, and then press the nearby button here to add these items to a global list or a character-specific list to sell or destroy items. You can of course exclude items later by clicking on items that are already added to the sell list in order to take them out, or pressing that plus button on the side to add items by ID. Since we're only farming for old transmog, I just added everything to the sell list anyway, and when I open up a vendor capable of selling, all of the relevant items get vendored. The add-on is not perfect, and it's not going to sell every item, but it does save a ton of time. Using this, you shouldn't have much of a problem keeping your inventory clear if you wanted to loot everything as you go. But to make doubly sure, there's another add-on to suggest for quickly mailing items off. I'm sure there are less resource-intensive add-ons out there, but my suggestion at the moment is to use Trade Skill Master. It's a very, very powerful add-on, primarily for managing the sales of goods. In this case, though, we're going to manage the movement of goods from one character to another. When you first install this add-on, it may ask you to download a desktop app that you don't need, just ignore that message. You also might want to wait until after like a few dungeons or raids, and after you've auto-sold all the transmog gear and your bags are just full of like random stuff, like trade goods. 
To set this up, type slash TSM to open up the main menu. Click on Groups over here on the top header. Hit the plus icon next to Base Group to the left just below the header. This will create a new group that will eventually contain a list of items that you want to always offload to another character. Go ahead and give this group a name. I call this one Farming Junk. On this left window are all the items in your inventory that haven't been added to a group. Select any items that you wish and then press the Add button below to add them to the group. Remove items by selecting items in the right window and then hit Remove. Once you're done adding the items that you want, click on Operations right up here above the item windows. Now you're setting up who these items are going to. Check the box here that says Override Parent Operations and then click on More Operations and then Create New Operation again. Under Target Character, type in the name of the character that you want to send your items to. Consider renaming this operation to something else in the future, in case you want to send mail off to multiple different characters or other complex commands and you want to stay organized. Otherwise, leave everything else alone and you're pretty much done setting things up. Going forward, whenever you want to mass mail your junk items, go to your mailbox, and if the Trade Master UI doesn't show up, click the button towards the top right of the mail window. Click on Groups towards the top of the window and you should see your group highlighted. Click to highlight it if it's not. Then press mail selected groups on the bottom and off your items go. I know this needed a lot more setup than Aardvark, but like I said, Trade Skill Master is very powerful and it needs a lot of configurations. In case I lost you though, please leave a comment and I'll do my best to help you out. Whatever the case, with those two add-ons set up, you're almost ready to do some industrial level transmog farming. Double check that you have the Ohuna Perch. It's a toy that creates a mailbox for you and has a 3 hour cooldown. You only need to reach Renown level 14 with a Maruk Centaur, and you're gifted this as a toy. I don't mean to shill here, but if you do happen to pre-order the War Within expansion, you get a free character boost that will boost a character not just to 70, they'll also get a big Renown boost, up to 20. Everyone's going to get this opportunity, so getting this toy is pretty much a given. Honorable mention goes to Katie's Stamp Whistle, it's another mailbox toy that shares a cooldown with the Ohuna Perch. A link to a Wowhead thread is in the description below if you want the steps to get that toy, but the Ohuna Perch is, again, far more simple to obtain. Finally, while there are a number of ways to access vendors, the most readily available vendor summon is the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. It costs 20,000 gold, it's bought in Old Dalaran, and it can be used anywhere mountain as possible regardless of race or class. It's a great early option for people who need to vendor on the go. Those add-ons and perks are the most critical pieces for quick farming and processing of your items. We're probably months away from being able to unlock Transmog on any character, so take your time putting this guide to effect. Once you do though, I would advise spending some time at least getting used to the routine and setting up add-ons. Practice the flow of putting on your speed set and draining your inventory. Add auto-selling rules to Aardvark ahead of time or as you go, and then have at it at a few select dungeons or raids. Let Aardvark do its work, and for whatever's left, set up rules in Trade Skill Master so you can quickly mail items to an auction mule. That way you can get right back to business. Running old content is going to be your kind of long-term RNG routine, but now we direct our attention over to Shadowlands unlocks, but I want to put out a warning here. The War Within Alpha has not started yet. There is no guarantee that Shadowlands Unlocks will work the way that we hope it will. I'll be keeping tabs on this, and the moment I find out one way or another, you're gonna know like right away. So, Shadowland features a Covenant system, which is a ton of different unlocks of pets and toys and mounts, and of course, Transmog. Collecting the Transmog can be time consuming because one has to progress into each Covenant and earn Renown, and progress through extra activities and reputations, and finally earn lots of Anima and Grateful Offerings. Those are currencies that are used to finally buy these items. Since the start of Shadowlands, players with access to these vendors could buy most of the appearance tokens even if they couldn't use it themselves. So you kind of see where I'm going with this. Again, we need to test this out to confirm, but in theory, a character who has fully unlocked the Covenants, their Sanctums, and activities may be able to buy most of the armor tokens and the different weapon appearances. So what can you do now? I suggest first assessing your progress. All the Things is another very powerful add-on for tracking transmog and just about everything else in the game, but let me walk you through checking your own progress in this particular field. With the add-on installed, access all the things settings through the menu, and then add-ons, and then all the things. 
under account wide things, make sure that only appearances and main only are checked, just like how it looks on screen. Then scroll down to weapons and armor, and we're going to press the all button. There's going to be a bit of lag while the add-on determines what you have and have not collected. Once that's done, leave this menu and mouse over your Reservoir Anima and Grateful Offerings in the Currency tab. It'll show you how much of each that you need in order to obtain all these appearances. My advice is to first identify all the characters who has currency that can be spent. It'll give you a pretty good ballpark of how much actual farming you need to do. When it does come time to farm, just pay attention to earning Grateful Offerings from the Xerath Mortis Weekly, followed by Covenant Callings, followed by Outdoor Quests. The anima is going to come on its own. As a reminder, you can trade anima between characters by using a special vendor up in Oribos. Finally, as things look right now, unfortunately you still need one character of each armor type to collect some of the armor ensembles. For example, the Trial of Ascension vendor for the Carrion only sells appearances for that character's armor type. On the plus side, it's going to be a little bit easier to farm for the weapon appearances from Castle Nathria, which were all behind weapon tokens. For these, you can simply use as many alts as you can to collect weapon tokens until you have the required number, and then just buy them all up. All the things also tracks how many of these that you need. Even with all that said, I wouldn't commit to anything more than just some information gathering, followed by fully unlocking the sanctums and their activities on at least one character. That'll already get you a ton of currency. And it's honestly a lot of activities, and when I did them, I had a lot of fun. For now, we're going to stop there. This whole thing with being able to unlock appearances with any character is going to be huge. I wanted to help you get started, but there's a lot more to cover, and I know for my sanity, I can only handle so much at once. Links to the add-ons and the Katie Stamp Whistle Guide are in the description below. Please like the video if it was helpful, subscribe for more coverage, and definitely leave some questions in the comments if you need help. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.